Hey there viewers, welcome back to another episode of VGAPR Garage. Today we're going to be working on my 2003 Chrysler Sebring Coupe. So, in this episode, or I guess, or series two, part two, whatever part it'll be, it'll say in the description, we're going to be replacing the front rotors and pads on this. The previous owner did put new rotors and pads on this, but because it's sat and because I'm particular about what brand are on, um, I'm replacing. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and remove these uh, guide pin bolts. They are 14 millimeter. And then as you can see, this line is in a bit of a incorrect loop, um, which is something I'm going to deal with. Uh, and yeah, we got to replace this line because I don't like how, or maybe that is fine. We can simply just um, undo this um, and put it back on. But I do have new brake lines because I do plan on putting on Burnbo calipers on front and rear. Uh, next thing is we got a nice 17 milli that holds the caliper bracket on. There's that one. A lot tighter with the transmission in here. I gotta go get a stubbier. Now, nah, there we go. There we are. Caliper bracket comes off and so does this rotor. Now I am gonna clean the hub surface, get all that rust off. All right, so we got our caliper bracket. I'm gonna take the calipers out. See how they're kind of stuck on it. That's no bueno, I don't like that. Pull out the old hardware. I'm gonna pull out the boot or the guide pins. Clean them up, put some nice silicone paste on them. But first I wanna show you a tool that um, Eric the Cart, not Eric the Cart, yeah. South Main Auto, his name is Eric, had on his channel, and it is made in Germany, and it is, what is it called? You can't really see it. The Muller Coupes, uh, C-U-E-P-S, and it is part number 460200. I got this off of eBay, um, and it's a file. But rather than, other than me using an actual real file and destroying it, this is specifically made to take the rust uh, out of the caliper brackets. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I have to say one of the really nice things about this compared to a file is once the rust is gone, everything, this tool moves very smoothly and the noise changes because it's hitting just the metal and not shearing off rust or shearing off, um, it's done shearing off rust and it doesn't go down and start shearing off the metal unlike a file, the file just starts eating away at everything. So I definitely, I would recommend this tool, there will be a link in the description. So now we want to put my favorite anti-seize on the mating surfaces. Make sure I can see it.
probably look like it's my first time doing this, but the camera is actually right where I normally would be. So now we gotta do the guide pins. You wanna clean the old grease off. And these are nice new boots. Uh, normally I would I had purchased new, but they're so, they're so, the ones in the rear I've got to purchase new because they've actually expanded and it's making it so uh, the air can't pass from the inside out, so it's actually pushing the guide pin out. Um, so it's definitely something that I'm going to have to take care of. Our other one here. Well, I like to hold the guide pin like this because it's important to get the top of the guide pin where the boot sits. That way that doesn't rust up. You don't need a, a crazy amount. And just put that in there. Make sure it goes in nice and easy, which it does. Pull it back a little bit. And guide pins on. Let's clean that silicone paste up. Let's get to the next one. Probably my hands in the way. Don't forget where the, the boot's going to sit up there. There we are. Take this. the boot in its place and there we go moves nicely now let's go ahead and get caliper hardware those click nicely into place and we got our new pads and the wear indicator let's pop the wear indicator on long side faces the the back side of it it would suck if you did it the other way because you're not going to be able to you wouldn't get very far without hearing some sc screeching. Get on there. Get on there. Come on. Nope, still not in the right spot. There we go. Now, I like to take Santi C's. Put it on the ears of the pads because the area that I live in, everything rusts. Pop that one in and the pad does move nicely, which is exactly what you want. You want nice free movement of the pads. Let's go ahead and pop the other one in after we put some anti-seize on the ears. And I'm sure if you're in a not in the salt belt. This is probably not necessary to put the anti seize like this. You guys probably, your hardware probably still looks brand new. And you probably don't have a huge rust hole on your frame. That's never mind. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and take this to the car. So now, to keep the hub surface uh, rust free, I'm going to spray some fluid film on that over the front and I like to get it on the sides of the hub as well there we are let's grab our rotor and this one is a coated rotor see the black it's coated so rust doesn't build up but it did have uh, grease on the mating surface the shipment grease I did clean off with brake clean you can clean off with soap and water but I did brake clean don't say that I didn't do it because I did you definitely want to clean the grease off all right we got our caliper bracket Go. 
Come here, find that hole. I always have a hard time finding the hole. Oh, that's the problem, it's getting caught up on the dust shield. Because you gotta put the bolt through the dust shield, and then it goes through. There we go, now it's to the dust shield, all right. Perfect, we're lined up. All right, let's pop onto the bottom. The dust shield. There we go. We're just gonna snug these down. All right, so now we got our torque wrench. We want to torque these bolts down to 74 foot-pounds. There we go. And there we go. Now, I'm gonna remove this clip because we're replacing this line. This, these needle nose work a lot better. See, a lot better. There we are. So now let's go ahead and put the, well first, because I forgot to do it, we have to, let's move you guys up a tad bit. We gotta compress the caliper piston. It's not perfect. Wrong way. There we are. Let's go ahead and take this. Whoop! Oh, the pad came out. Let's go ahead and take this. Put it over the pads. Let's grab a caliper bolt. Nicely. And then we got another one. Then we want to torque these down to 28 foot pounds. There we go. So now, since we're gonna be replacing that brake line, the first thing is, I'm gonna clean the bleeder off. And then we wanna make sure that we can get this bleeder out. Before we do this, because if we can't get the bleeder out, we can't bleed the brakes, and that's no good. So this bleeder is an eight millimeter. So first things first, let's see if we can crack it loose by just rocking it. And something tells me, oh, it is. Let's rock it back the other way. <laughs> you don't want to break these off and you won't be having a fun day. I like to I like to pull it all the way out <laughs> and then put it all the way back in several times. Alright. And there we go. Our bleeder is out. I am gonna clean this up. I'm okay with it leaking everywhere. We're gonna bleed it anyways. 
All right, let's go ahead and pop the bleeder back in. All right, let me grab a paper towel. Oh, I got one right here. All right, because you don't want to get um, brake fluid um, on paint or anything like that. All right, so then I did, let's see if I can move this to a better location so that you guys can see. How's that looking? Much better. I did have to heat that um, brake line up a little bit so that it would come out. It is a 10 mil. There we are, that is cracked loose. Next I wanna go ahead and get this one right here. The banjo bolt. Let's see what size that is. And it is a 14. Free. All right. Well, that's free. The other thing you want to do is you don't see the um, copper washer there. So that must mean that it's on that and you don't want to double stack um, washers. It will leak. So it's still on there, I'm gonna have to put my head in here. There, it came off. And we got the banjo bolt, and it's not on the banjo bolt, so we're good to go there. Oops, keep that brake line down. In fact, we can pull it out of here and let the brake line just go down. All right, next thing is undoing the brake line but at this point we also can remove the metal retainer clip yeah let's go ahead and remove that metal retainer clip here Undo this line. It's still tight. So can't do it by hand. Right, it's out. This pops out. I want to move this out of the way for a little bit because I want to clean this area up. All right. Now let's go grab the new brake line. Grab, where did I put it? Uh, take the new brake line, and it only go, I believe it only goes in one way. Yep. There's like two flats on it, and there's two little tabs that you've got to put the flats into. And because there's stuff on this, there's like a undercoating. Got it started this way.
Make sure that's nice and tight. Then I got the clip. We're gonna put that in there. We're gonna probably should grab a hammer. Tap, tap, tap. All right, then we're gonna take some fluid film. Spray that all down. Then we're gonna grab <laughs> the banjo bolt after I find out what I did with it. Because I don't know what I did with it. <laughs> come here, come here, banjo bolt. Oh, there it is. And then these brake line kits come with washers, new new copper washers. So I'm gonna grab those. You put one on the nut side or on the banjo bolt side. And then we're gonna route this as if it's being installed that way. And then it comes down with a bolt through there. And then the washer. And this is gonna be a little difficult. I can tell already to get everything lined up nice and straight. Do not cross thread, you will regret it. off. Again, you don't want to get this brake fluid too many places. And then let's tighten this down. I'll give you guys a torque spec. this in the place which there we go not exactly the easiest I'll show this down in there ah, ah, ah. this is actually trying to get this in line isn't the easiest. that there and then the fluid film on the banjo bolt. Actually done first. Clean the brake clean off. Let that dry and then we'll go ahead and uh, put some fluid film and then I'll go through the bleed earring process. So this is the tool that I use from Eastwood or that was uh, given to me as a gift from Eastwood. Um, that helps you bleed your brakes. Uh, I could put a, you know, a link in the description. Let's see how I feel when I'm editing the video. So what it comes with is hose so that doesn't get eaten away by brake fluid. There is a directional arrow on that telling flow, and then you get a few different wrenches that go on, I think, did I get on the first time? Nope. That go on 
the bleeders. And they'll suck because, is it this one? Yes, it's this one. Now we'll put the tube on there, and then I just put the tube in a bottle, like so. And then we undo the banjo bolts. And I'm gonna let it start dripping first. I gotta open the hood and put some uh, brake fluid in. You guys can still see? Good, because now I'm gonna go into the car and start pumping the brake. What's nice is, is you actually can see, that's the clutch, you can see it pumping. Don't know if my pedals can't see them. See how dirty that is, ew. Add some more brake fluid. Sure we don't. Brake pedal right there. I think we're good. Now let's go ahead and top off the, the master cylinder. A little bit more fluid. And then you tighten this down. And it's cool how the wrench will move. So you can turn it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Make sure it's nice and tight. Take the line off. Take the tool off. Come on. And with that, that's how you replace front brakes on a Dot Stratus Coupe or Chrysler Sebring Coupe, um, some Mitsubishi's, and it's how you replace the brake line. Um, and a place to break line and uh, bleed this, well, this corner. If you guys have any questions or comments, you know, put them down there in the uh, comment section. Um, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, let me know why. Uh, please share, think about liking, or think about subscribing. Uh, if you want to subscribe, don't forget to ring that bell, which is about in this area, so you get notifications. Clean your tools off, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.